So we are going to start. And the next talk is by Doug Turnbull from Open Source Connections. He will, he will be talking about hacking Lucene for custom search results. Thanks, Artem. Uh, so you guys big Lucene fans? Is everyone in here? You guys write a lot of Lucene code? Yay. Yay! Does everyone know the Lucene dance? No, I don't know. I was going to make one up on the spot, but I'll wait till I'm done the talk, and then I'll, I'll, I'll do a little dance. So uh, I'm Doug. Uh, I work uh, with uh, search relevancy primarily is my, is my sort of bailiwick, taking customer requirements for search, how search results should be shaped, and turning that into uh, a product is what I spend most of my time doing. Um, I work for a company called Open Source Connections. Uh, we're a pretty big partner of Lucidworks, which is the company behind Solar. We do uh, a large percentage of their professional services. Um, and uh, we kind of get into Solar as sort of the foundation of whatever we do and wherever we're at. But from that, we tend to branch out into doing all kinds of things from telling you your back end sucks for this stuff over here and re telling you doing some Cassandra work and, um, uh, and also building search applications front to back uh, is a big part of, of, of our work. And um, I have several shameless plugs in this, uh, in this presentation. The first one will be now, which I'll say if anyone's interested in doing this kind of work in terms of freelancing or if you're a small consulting shop that wants a place for work, please come talk to me because we'd love to talk to you. So shameless plug one out of the way. And um, I just put this slide in here because when you get these slides later, you want links to all these places. There's code for this talk here uh, that actually compiles as opposed to the code that's in this presentation that I often intentionally just code in PowerPoint just to make sure you know do the thing where people don't copy paste. And then they can't blame you because, you know. And then the, the content is primarily based on these two blog articles that I wrote uh, on the Open Source Connections blog. We blog a lot about search, search architecture relevancy, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and random stuff like uh, AngularJS. So please check that out. Um, if you're, you know, if you miss part of the presentation, you can go there and get the, the prose version. So the, ha, when we're doing search work, the sort of archetype of what happens is we have a, a user that's pretty tough on our search. And users are, are very uh, demanding. Users have an algorithm in their head sometimes, or it may change day to day, of how a search should behave, how, what search relevancy, what we call search relevancy, how that, how that algorithm works. So we got a guy who's screaming on his phone, and this is my, you know, I knew this was like a little bit more of a nerdy talk, so I got a funny uh, image for our client. And that's actually from a Twitter account called PHP CEO, which is really a funny, great thing to follow if, if you're on the Twitters. So <clears throat> users are very demanding. They have a set of expectations in their head about what they expect, how they expect search to behave. And they, I go through these, these, uh, these exercises where I, I take people through how a search engine works and how Lucene works and how uh, the field of information retrieval works. And customers just don't care about that. They have their own requirements. They need things working the way they need them working. They need the certain search results returned for certain queries in a certain order, and that's what they need. So they've got expectations in their head of how that's supposed to work. And um, the ways that we get at this problem are, are sort of two or three tiered. <clears throat> for 90% of the cases, we become really, for our, in our case, we become really good solar or maybe elastic search users where we get into things like text analytics, how are we doing analyzing the text coming into, the, uh, into, the, into solar, how are we analyzing the query, how are we tokenizing and stemming and there's all kinds of tricks you can play with that. And then how are you coupling that with a boosting strategy? Uh, what kind of built-in query parser are you using? All of these things that are baked into 
Solar and Elasticsearch or whatever you're using to wrap Lucene. <clears throat> all of that stuff is there and will get you almost entirely all the way there or probably all the way there. Uh, and then if that doesn't get you where you need to go, you can go kind of to the medium level of difficulty, which is, all right, now I need to break out an IDE and I need to write a Java plugin for Solar. And you can start to do some sort of high level stuff like write a query parser where you take a uh, text from a user's query and you turn that into Lucene queries, lower level Lucene queries that then you start becoming more like you know, things were when there wasn't Solar or Elasticsearch and you're just writing Lucene code and sort of redefining how the search engine works at that layer. Um, and then you can do things like write your own analyzers and that kind of thing in Java to do play with how text, uh, text gets into the search engine and becomes searchable. A lot of, I've had one client refer to this whole process as jerry-rigging, where basically you are jerry-rigging the search to make sure that you, uh, it is set up to succeed against the queries that you're going you're gonna to send to it. So each of these is its own dozen talks. And I'm going to go, I'm going to blast even lower than all this stuff. And uh, we're going to have all this stuff sort of, uh, uh, we're not going to talk about how any of this works, but there's a lot of great talks at, at, this, at, this, uh, at this conference that hopefully cover that. <clears throat> okay, so we went through that whole process. Six months have passed. We've been working on this project forever. We're, we're building this whole complex structure of stuff that attempts to approximate the algorithm that the, that the client has in their head of how search should work. And it's just, you get some things to work okay and other things aren't working, they're just falling down. And it becomes a game of whack-a-mole, you know, you, you're tweaking these rules and you don't know if you're breaking things or fixing things. And it's, it can become, search relevancy can become a nightmare without good testing. <clears throat> so we give up. And the next level, and this is the level I'm talking about today, is the nuclear option. This is when I say, forget all that stuff. I'm smarter than solar. I know what I want. And I'm going to implement some custom Lucene scoring. I'm going to uh, use the data structures in Lucene. And I'm going to tell uh, Lucene, these are the documents in the order that I want. Don't disagree with me. This is what I'm doing. Uh, because this is I, exactly what my client wants. So, but this is the nuclear option. And with great power comes great responsibility. OK, so we've, we've reached our second shameless plug. Um, I talked about how uh, search testing is very much like a whack-a-mole operation where you fix one thing, break something else. And it's very easy to get in the situation where you're going down a path and you think you've fixed a set of queries, but you have no idea if you've broken 90% of everything else. So we have a product called Cupid that helps with that. And I'm actually going to be talking about it tomorrow at, uh, in, our, in the test-driven uh, relevancy uh, talk that I'm giving tomorrow. And um, if you're interested in that kind of thing or have just keep churning on, on relevancy problems and not getting anywhere, that's a good thing to check out. You can talk to me about that later. OK. So with that out of the way, let's remember what Lucene looks like. So we've, we're assuming that we've built a Lucene index and it's sitting maybe on a directory in a file system, OK? Uh, here I'm using a RAM directory. but regardless. And we need to get to the point where we can uh, execute searches. So I think there's like a Lucene in five minutes website that uh, is really good for like boilerplate code. But this is all boilerplate stuff. Uh, I'm going to make a directory. I'm going to get an index reader. And I'm going to get an index searcher. And the directory is simply Lucene's way of talking to the fi a file system or a file system-like thing, index reader is your handle as a user to all the great data structures that are in Lucene, the inverted index. And an index searcher is, the, uh, is how you execute queries. It's responsible for taking a Lucene query, collecting a bunch of results, and spitting back out a, uh, a basically a, the list of results. So, <clears throat> and in Lucene, we make queries. Queries are what we, how we tell Lucene what we're looking for. And I think Eclipse really screwed me over with the, uh, with the little weird highlighting here when I copy-pasted. So that doesn't really emphasize anything. 
So here we're creating a term query. This is the most basic kind. Uh, we're creating a term query. We're looking in field tag for the term space. And we're going to create a query with that. Uh, and it's the, the, the next thing, we're creating a term query for Star Trek. And we're creating a query for that. And we just create these queries. We plop them into index searcher.search. And we get a bunch of results back. So there's a very basic query. And then we have queries that combine queries. So we have Boolean query, which is extremely powerful. Uh, must and should uh, operators must be kind of being a, an and operation. And just with this power, we can aggregate and create a lot of different, uh, different queries without even getting into the point where we're doing any kind of custom anything uh, under, sort of under the hood in Lucene. So query is the query and the query, all the classes related to query, really, are related to two primary behaviors. First is matching. What is the set of the documents I'm going to return in no particular order? So what documents to include in the results? So the set of all movies that are titled Star, have Star Trek or Star Wars in the title, that's a set of results and, but doesn't have any order associated with it. <clears throat> and scoring, what is... How are we rank, scoring and ranking? Where, where are those results lining up? Like, what is coming before the other? And that's where we add uh, scores to documents, and we, we sort things in the right order. So if I was to explain to my boss, the, my hypothetical boss, how all this works, <coughs> I would draw three squares, and I would take him, through, him or her through this process. We have a Lucene query. <coughs> And in reality, it's, it's, a little, it's more than that. And we have an index reader that is sort of our handle to the, to the index, the Lucene index on disk. And we go through a process where we iterate through. It's an iterative process. We ask for a, the next match. The Lucene query asks that go, look, use the index reader to find the next match for what we're looking for. We send it back. OK. That's the matching process. And then. While we're on that document, we, the, index, the index searcher, which is doing this work, asks the query, OK, could you, could you give me a score for that so I can know how to rank that? OK, great. Calculate a score maybe by interrogating the, uh, the index a little bit more and send that back. So this is the process that it goes through every time you execute a search. It's, it's this process for reiterating through documents that match and simultaneously scoring them. Feel free to stop me at any time if you have any questions about this. So, so our first stop, yeah? Where's the starting point on? So the starting, yeah, the starting index searcher, yeah. So he was asking where the starting point was for this whole process. and. Uh, index searcher really drives this. So um, the first stop to get custom search results, and the simplest thing, sort of the tactical nuclear option, is to use custom score query. And what custom score query lets you do is to wrap a query, let the query do the matching, but override its score. So take the score that it says it has, throw it out, and put whatever number you want in place of that which is extremely, extremely powerful. So we go through this process, and all the way off, off the screen is the index searcher saying, whoops, saying, next match, please. OK, yeah, we go through this. Here you go. Score that, please. We get the score for that. And instead of throwing that score back, we rescore the document. We use what's called a custom score provider, which is just a, basically just a function that returns a score, returns that back, and that's the score that goes back to the index searcher. Yeah? Why is the input to this? Oh, it is, right, so I'll show you in a second. He was asking what the, what the uh, input to the custom score provider is, and I'll show that in a second. Uh, through, so yeah, so we're, we've not changed matching behavior, so we might take a Boolean query of Star Trek or Star Wars, and that's our set of stuff. 
But we've said, okay, term query, whatever it was, or Boolean query, I'm taking your score that you think you think, you think you are going to give it, and I'm going to throw that away, and I'm going to make sure all the Star Trek content always comes above the Star Wars content because it's inherently better. So, and, yep. So, uh, right, so what does this look like? And this is supposed to say custom, whatever I said in my last time, custom uh, score query, not custom query score, which is a complete, probably a complete other thing. So <clears throat> if I'm searching for Star Trek, then that comes back. Here's a normal term query. Okay. But what you do is you override, you inherit from, um, you extend actually custom score query, make your own counting query, and you, all you do is you override a method that news the, the custom score provider. And you pass it in the, um, the query that you're wrapping. And the custom score provider, here's, this, is the one this is the most important method for, uh, that you're overriding to create our custom score provider. It's the counting query score provider, so that's actually going to throw away whatever uh, score we threw in there and return back a new one. So here's the, here's the basic, very basic interface. And there's actually more, a little bit more here than I'm, what I'm covering because there's stuff like, this is actually, uh, I believe, results of function queries that you can monkey with, which I haven't, I haven't messed with that myself. But uh, primarily, for our purposes, the interface is this doc, which is a, a doc ID, a Lucene doc ID, to if you wanted to ask any questions of an index reader of what you know, to change the score. And the sub-query score, so whatever the score of the query I'm wrapping is. And its job is to simply return uh, the new score. <clears throat> and in this case, you know, we're doing something stupid, we're returning one. Okay, so let's look at some real code that does something real. We are going to uh, use this code to count the number of terms in the field. And it's kind of a, probably a naive implementation of this. In fact, a lot of these examples, you could probably think hard enough and do them without any of uh, the custom score uh, stuff that I'm showing you. These are just really examples that are easy to think of. Uh, if they're easy to think of, then someone's probably thought of it and done something uh, for it. Um, so what this does is using, assuming that we've indexed this field with term vectors, term vectors being a very convenient way to to really access basically everything you want about a document, uh, we're going to go and we're basically going to go through this boiler code where we get the uh, terms enum for the for the document, and we're going to iterate and count every uh, occurrence of that term and just return the number of terms as the score. So what this would do is is put documents, large documents, ahead of smaller documents all the time. So in terms, of, uh, in terms of crazy or scary, this is, has relatively few gotchas. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's limited, so we don't control our matches. But for matching, you can get so much out of your, the normal uh, Lucene queries. And if you just need to change scoring, this is basically where you should get off the train. Uh, there's no reason to go any further. So, <clears throat> great. So this is how you change Lucene scoring to do whatever you want, whatever you can imagine, without having to mess with any of the solar boosts and function queries and all that, figuring out all that stuff. Just tell it what you want. Uh, and what we're going to do next is look at how we can also get matches. So I need to control, what if I need to control both scoring and matching? What if I need to control uh, how, not just the number that gets assigned to a document, but I need to decide at a very fine grained level what is in the set of matched documents and what is not in the set of matched documents? And that's really where you want to use a custom Lucene query. So we're, we're in, we've left the tactical nuclear space and we're in full blown megaton neutron bomb territory. So 
the example I'm going to use, which again you could probably think hard enough about and do this without using this, is to do a uh, search for terms backwards. So how we want our query to work is if we search for banana, we want documents with N and Bob and the to score at five. But let's also keep the forward terms in and we'll give them a score of one. Just in case we don't find the, the backwards terms, we'll kind of give you uh, some, some results that aren't as good. <clears throat> so let's, here's our 30,000 foot view again of the uh, index searcher and we're gonna dig into Lucene query at one level deeper. So really it's, this is, there's three classes in, involved here in Java. There's a query, a weight, and a score. Uh, and these are, this is the triumvirate of doing custom Lucene queries. Now, <clears throat> the important thing is to remember is queries create weights, weights create scores. Weights are kind of interesting. They, they track uh, in searcher level statistics over uh, for your query. They do a process called query normalization that you may or may not care to participate in. I'll talk about that. It's kind of, you could think of uh, uh, IDF as kind of that, that factor to the side of uh, the in inverse document frequency over the entire index. That's the weight of that query. Uh, Weights create scores, and scorer is really where all the interesting stuff is that for your for your custom Lucene query. So a lot of times I say this, I've some people uh, for some a lot of times will implement weight and scores in our Java classes. Sometimes maybe not, and uh, and so sc scores are, are do uh, matching and scoring. They're basically the engine of the of the query, and. Uh, this is just some basic outline of what that might look like without, uh, and I completely screwed up because uh, it's not, nothing is extending anything. So this is a, don't copy paste this code. So let's look at how these are, it's important to know how these are used if we're gonna override them for our own custom behavior. So when we, I do this, which is just the, my new query and I'm searching on it, I, basically what happens in Java-like pseudocode is this. I get a weight, I go through a normalization process with that weight, and for every index reader, and this is kind of a tricky part because in Lucene, you have to remember that you're dealing with potentially multiple segments that you're searching over simultaneously. So the index searcher is kind of responsible for, for abstracting that away. And actually the index reader kind of abstracts that away. But for each index reader, each segment, you're doing a score. And we get a score for, for, this, uh, for that index reader from the weight. And that score is now ready to go and return search results. So let's, let's look. Before we get to the part where the score is starting to pump out search results, let's look at what our weight is doing. Now, weight is kind of a tricky thing because uh, I, I said that there's all these different, there's actually lots of different segments and there's this index searcher, or index reader associated with each. And the index searcher is kind of overarching all of those index readers. So the index reader is actually, uh, uh, or, or the, the, index, yeah, the index searcher that overarches the index readers has some statistics that might be useful to track. A lot of those statistics are, are in a, another class that you can completely customize called similarity, which is highly associated with the searcher. But the important thing here is your weight is tracking index searcher level statistics for all of the segment files on disk, stuff like inverse document frequency. And that's... That's, exa that's exactly what weight does. It tra tracks those statistics and it participates in kind of a normalization process that uh, seems to mean many different things to many different queries and is very abstract. I'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, and, but I, the important thing here is you, don't, you may or may not care about these statistics. 
you may just want to say, forget it. My only job is I'm going to create searchers, and there, I don't need these statistics to calculate a score. So query normalization is kind of the, the a mandatory, if you were in the index searcher code and you were like, where is this weight actually used? The, the query normalization process is the one place that you kind of scratch your head and say, okay, what's going on here? And it's kind of an odd, odd process. So weight basically says, here's what I think my weight is, which could mean anything. Okay, so I, I take your weight and I give it to the similarity, which is tracking searcher level statistics, and I get a number back. Okay, a normalized number based on whatever pluggable algorithm that is. This entire, everything in here is completely overridable, so it's extremely abstract and can make you scratch your head. And then we pass back that normalized value so that that weight can do whatever it wants to uh, with those statistics. So if you follow term query through this process, it basically turns out that after all the math that's done, you get an IDF out. It kind of preserves the TF-IDF uh, similarity. Yeah, and like I said, this is very abstract code that can be plugged to do whatever and or completely ignored depending on what you want to do. Uh, an interesting, this process is uh, interesting with Boolean query because it gets a value for normalization, it normalizes it, and then it, the third line, it uses that normalized value to kind of rebalance the different parts of the Boolean query. Um, I don't fully understand that, but it's, I could see where that would be pretty useful. So um, let's look at our weight in our, in our backwards query that we're building. Uh, we're not doing anything. So I told you all that stuff for nothing. And we're creating a score. We have to, manu we have to create a score, and we're just returning our new backwards score. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've taken that diversion through weight land, let's talk about scores. So scores are really where the interesting stuff happens. Scores have two jobs. First, they match, uh, which they, means they actually expose an iterator kind of interface over the documents that match, and they score. They score wherever they currently are. They return you a number. So, <clears throat> and how that works is score actually participates in this inheritance chain, gets, uh, and has to override these three methods. Next doc to go to the next match, advance to seek to a match, and doc ID. What's the, what's the ID, do, Lucene doc ID of the current match? Pretty, pretty straightforward. It's, a, it's an interface we're going to have to implement if we want custom matching. And score adds this, obviously, the score method. Return a number. Take, return the score for whatever, wherever we are pointing at in our iterator interface. So basically, this little lie I told you to get started, we can, we can say, actually, what's happening is that's really the process that happens. The query is not really into here. The scorer that the query's weight generates is actually the engine that's driving this process. And instead of next match please, we have next doc, part of that interface. And instead of score that please, we have score. Give me the score for that. And that's the process that, that happens in maybe more 5,000 feet as opposed to 30,000 feet. Yeah. So how would we, next doc is really uh, the first thing we want to implement. You can, it, you can uh, advance, uh, I've seen only used in terms of explain where you want to seek to a specific document, get a score for it and return out. So, uh, next doc is where I start with this kind of thing. Um, and how we implement this, we have to remember that how um, our index reader works. Index reader, I think the animation's on his, got a little screwed up. Index reader is exposing an interface to an inverted index. That's, that's what Lucene is. It's a very powerful inverted index. And it's just like a book index. We have terms and a list of pages that those terms occur on. Okay, so how does, how does index reader expose that? Well, 
we can have a, a terms enum, which is just an enumeration of these terms. So everything on the left here. And then once we seek to a term, we have a docs enum. Okay, the doc IDs that are next to here. So these page numbers basically. But we're using this is we're using document IDs. Right. We're do, we're doing and this index is built up, I think the main thing to know is it's built up per field. Okay. So we've got our score here. What would next doc look like? We can use the terms enum off the index reader to look it up info for a specific term. We've basically taking, taken the term, this is the, remember that term object that is basically just a field and a string for a value. We're gonna get the terms enum for a field and we're gonna seek to, to where that term is. Okay. And what's that gonna do? We, we've pointed the terms enum there. That's gotten us to the part in the index where we're looking, ah, Shakespeare, okay. Each term has a docs enum that lists the docs that contain this term, okay. Pages four, five, and six. And that's, that's what we have is a docs enum that just lists the pages and it's, it's ready, to be, uh, ready to be consumed and list out the pages, or in this case, the doc IDs. And it turns out that this docs enum is exactly the same interface that the Lucene score that is invisible, oddly, has to implement. So all we have to do for our next doc is actually increment the uh, next docs of that. We've gone to Shakespeare and now we just have to increment all the page numbers basically. And that's term query. We've just implemented term query. That's the most fundamental Lucene query that we've just implemented. And uh, let's look at how, and this code is in GitHub, and you can look at it. Let's look at how that reflects in terms of our, uh, our backwards score that we've implemented. So I'm prefacing this with a saying I'm making this backwards term, which is really the field, and then reversing the, reversing the, uh, the term. And okay. So we're gonna apply the same thing here. We've got the backwards term. We're going to seek to where that backwards term is. And we're gonna get a, a doc enum for the backwards doc in our, before we create the score. We're actually gonna pass all this into the score. Yeah. And we've got that. So we've got, we've, in our score we've got that, that doc enum and we're gonna just basically, we're gonna keep on keep track of where we are. Um, doc IDs, when scores, doc IDs uh, uh, go up sequentially. So we can say, okay, where, where are we? We're at, are we on the current? Are we on the, uh, if, if we're current doc ID, which is what we're tracking here, if we're on the backwards one, okay, we need to push the backwards one. Also, if we're on the forwards one, we need to push the forward ones first. And we're gonna return doc ID which figures out which one of these is uh, we should return. Okay, so we're basically, we just have to think about how do you walk two iterators at the same time. And, okay, so what does score look like? We've implemented next doc. What does score look like? Well, it's, we could just put a one there. But what we're actually doing is we're tracking the, uh, this is the method doc ID that we have to override. We're returning the score, or we're returning the doc ID, and we're tracking where we are in this process. So we're kind of cheating by tracking state in this method that shouldn't be tracking state. And we'll set this curse score variable based on whether we're on backwards or whether on forwards. Backwards score is five and forward score is one. Okay, so we're tracking that. And remember, we always call doc ID every time we do next doc, so that always updates. And then score, yeah, score just returns curse score. So we just return the current score, that variable that we're tracking. So that's, that's basically, you could take that to the bank and do basically almost everything you need to do. You could implement advance in terms of next doc and uh, We've seen doc ID, score, and uh, uh, yeah, so we've seen all the methods involved there. Now, 
that works, but it takes a lot of pain and consternation to get here. Uh, first of all, the first bug that I had when I was doing, when I did this for a client was I would execute a search and I would get search results, and then I would execute a different search and I would get that first set of search results back again. And this kind of scratched my head what's going on, and it turns out you need to implement hash code and equals so that the caching mechanisms know that you're actually executing a different query and not something that's in a cache somewhere. Okay, so I had to learn that the hard way. And then you get lots of weird uh, test failures. If, if you're not quite using codecs just the right way, some of, like, for example, term vectors, sometimes they'll work fine, uh, sometimes they won't. And uh, if, you're not f if you're not following the protocol quite, quite right, you might not notice the error until, until well into development. And so we've, I found that using the Lucene test case project and the whole Lucene test environment was really powerful in um, ferreting out these errors because they do a lot of randomized testing with different codecs, different implementations of everything. So make sure if you use this that you've used the Lucene test case, uh, Lucene test uh, project to test all your code. Add uh, extras that I don't talk about. You can implement query rewriting, which is a way of saying, okay, Boolean query of one clause it doesn't really need to be a Boolean query. It can just be the one, it can take whatever's in the clause and just return that. It's a way of simplifying myself. Uh, into a more efficient query. Uh, and then I didn't go into how you could do explain, which is pretty straightforward. It's kind of a key value store. Uh, pre pretty straightforward AI, although it's API. Though it's, fun, it's funny because when you implement explain, you have to start debugging why your explain isn't working and it's kind of inception, right? So. It sometimes explain isn't exactly matching what it should or what the actual score is when you add the score field. Uh, so there's a lot, I touched on a lot of stuff here and, and I really just went straight through without looking at all the, the forest. We just went straight down the path. So uh, there is a lot of power here. And one of the things that I think is great about Lucene and solar uh, is it's really the fuzzy analytic search that everyone uses for looking at data. And I think through a lot of the stuff, you can get a lot of power out of it. Uh, just about any search problem that you need to solve. So um, that in mind, are there any questions that anyone would like to ask about this stuff, this crazy stuff? Or anyone want to call me crazy? Please raise your hand. No? Yeah. Oh, wait for the mic. Uh, so with Cupid, can we use it on, say, uh, Solar 1.4? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I pro probably it really requires not a whole lot from solar, just really the UR. Any, in fact, we've used it for custom Acquia plugins, like Acquia, the Drupal plugins. Uh, and we just put whatever it can take, put stuff in a query string like solar can, if, then it'll work with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Amit? Uh, so two questions. Um, first of all, did you do what you showed here in solar? Or were yeah. you just doing the strain with scene? I did this in solar. I did, uh, I, I had a, uh, a very simple query parser that accompanied what I did. I, uh, the example project was a very technical, the, pro, not, or the, the project that I did this for was a very technical medical search project, uh, a Q&A system. And uh, I would have had to educate you in about a year of backstory of why all, like a dozen, which may have actually been an interesting talk, a dozen ways relevancy failed until we went crazy and did the nuclear option. But So the second question is, how does this affect caching? Um, and the reason I ask this is, you know, a lot of times if the queries themselves are cached uh, at the solar level, but you yeah. need to do custom scoring 
on a per query basis, you're basically potentially blowing out the cache each time, or? I think it's, I mean, honestly, I think it works. So uh, that's a good question. I don't really know. The only, I imagine it's going to be kind of the same because it's, you're, I think, so there's the cache that stores what results for query, and that was the cache I was running into where I didn't override hash code or equals in my query. So that's one consideration. And then, but outside of that, for like, I imagine there's doc values and stuff. That's all going to be different anyway, because you're for any kind of query. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I would I would make so basically what what either something in Lucene or Solar does, and I didn't dig into this. Jack might know more, or other people might know more. Is the uh, if you don't implement hash code and, and the Lucene test stuff, make sure you implement hash code and equals correctly. It will test your query. If you don't implement hash code and query correctly, your results are gonna you, you're caching whatever is caching your query's results isn't gonna work. So. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's what he said is it's basically whether the Lucene query structure is equal or not. So I could potentially have, if I detected that my query, whatever, yeah, I'm in a situation that was identical to another query, even if it, there were some debug settings that were different, I could declare those equal, and that would affect caching so that it, it wouldn't actually execute the query again. It would return a cache set of doc IDs. So. Uh, question. Uh, so typical search, uh, typical search, like product search ranking is popularity uh, multiplied by relevance. Relevance yeah. is ATF idea. Popularity gets somewhere else. So does it is it covered by this architecture? Uh, so popularity. So you're saying popularity you popularity get from somewhere else, not from right. Index, not from the index. Right. So so you get popularity not from the index, and you are using that in your scoring. Yeah. I know so then for scoring, you need to multiply relevance, which you get from TFID, right. popularity, which you get from outside. Sorry. Right. So you could score that outside of solar, or you could, uh, you, could in, um, you could try to keep that up to date in solar, which is probably a pain. Or you can, um, there's other things like external fields. So you could, I, I haven't messed with external fields much, but there are ways to adapt Solar and Lucene to look for a field in a specific, like a database or something. So, yeah. Uh, if you have, say, customers within the same company who maybe have differing views on what a query, how a query should work, or what results should come back, what are some ways that you've maybe dealt with that situation? <clears throat> so we've had in our company, and I personally haven't dealt with this specific thing, but one of the strategies is personas. So personas, you kind of have different relevancy strategies for different people. You have a different relevancy strategy for the 70-year-old uh, grandmom who is going to give up e more easily and has specific needs versus the 10-year-old kid. Uh, how you detect, and the interesting question there is how you detect what bucket to put people in. They might voluntarily give you information that does that, which is great, or you, uh, you have to do something to detect that. And maybe it's on, based on buying patterns and um, some statistical models of, of users. Uh, and, then that, and then you just basically you've reduced one search problem to however many personas search problems. So. I have a question. <clears throat> OK. Uh, is this approach different from uh, recent uh, Expression sorting. Expression sorting. Uh, w when you can use JavaScript for uh, rescore re your uh, your documents by score multiplied by uh, some function, etc. I haven't messed with that actually. I don't know. Haven't that sounds pretty, this? pretty awesome. Listen function. Yeah, it's uh, uh, so I could see that happening. Uh, at the query parser level, or I could see that happening as a sort of custom score query that does that. So what, what that does sounds very similar to the custom score query approach, where it's basically I'm using another query for matching, and I'm going to have some code that takes the score and monkey with it to do whatever I need to. But although with that, can you, can you, 
can you interface with the index reader to do anything? Or do you have to, are you taking fields and doing a transformation based on the field values? Because I, I could see that kind of in a query parser context. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe if there's some way to. I was just saying with function queries, you can do things like with term frequency of a term and yeah. things like that. So, you know, value sources. You had that, there was that one place in the scene where. Yeah, in the custom. In. Uh, I don't know anything about that, but, but, but there's the idea of you could do function queries after your main query and apply a global yeah. additive or multiplicative mm -hmm. score um, and how you decide whether. Uh, to go nuclear down into deep into your query yeah. versus doing something you apply after. Yeah, yeah, function queries are great. Um, and I wonder if that's, that lets you do this access to the same operators, like get the TFIDF score queries and stuff. Is that a, is that a, co job, a solar component? Excuse me? Is that a solar component, a uh, query parser? The recent version of Solar has this uh, expressions component. Uh, today, uh, I've got to update my Solar skills. It was presented by. Uh, oh, that's at the Lucene level. So at Lucene, we don't have expressions. Oh, Solar okay. Okay, maybe coming soon. Okay. I'm not sure how that works. And that might be that's a good question. That yeah. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. So anyone else have any other questions? I don't know what time it is. We've got, we've got time. If Thank you very much. Okay, and thank you. Thanks, Doug. Now Feel free to email me or find me on Twitter if you need anything. <laughs>